Hello everyone, how's it going? It's a professional here. So today we are reviewing the Vigilante. Now the Vigilante is a new um, vehicle that came out. It's a, it's a unique because it's a land vehicle, unlike all the smugglers um, run vehicles that were planes. This is actually a land vehicle. It costs $3,750,000 and you can only buy it on war stock cash and carry. So right here we are getting into the vehicle and it is important to note that this vehicle can only be um, customized with an MOC, a mobile operations center. So you already need a mobile operations center in order to be able to customize the vehicle itself, which is kind of disappointing because not all players have it. Now, um, this vehicle, a lot of it, the the same kinds of upgrades that you can have in regular vehicles. The only real unique upgrades on this on this vehicle are the ability to put on missiles onto it. Um, thankfully, we don't have to. You don't have to research the missiles, so you don't have to worry about that. We can pretty much. Thankfully, we can also make it any color. It would have sucked if it was just limited to black. But we can make it any color we want. And right here, put down the crew level. I'm not a suspension guy, so I'm going to leave that transmission. We're going to make this as fast as possible. And we gotta put on our missiles, tire enhancement, bulletproof tires, no um no custom rims on this car. Only thing that we can customize with the with the wheels is tire smoke itself. Okay. And now, how does this car actually handle? Now, when you're not driving this car, you're going to feel that the handling feels very different in this car than it does in other cars. And for good reasons, this car feels very heavy when you're driving it. And rightfully so, it should feel very, very heavy. It's kind of like the Batmobile. It's a huge vehicle. I just look at how big the wheels are in the back. The handling in this vehicle is not great. I'm going to let everybody know. The handling is not, not good. So if you're expecting to make tight corners with this vehicle, get away from players, you are not going to be able to in this kind of a vehicle. And I guess it is kind of realistic because... You, you wouldn't think that a vehicle with this kind of, like, this heavy and, like, those wide of wheels that it would be able to make turns like that that easily. Now, how does this vehicle handle the other things such as speed? Let's talk about that right now. Now, right here, we are doing a speed test um, against two oppressors, one on my right and one on my left, and an Intali just for fun on the runway. And when this vehicle was first coming out, I was curious about if this vehicle was going to be faster than the oppressor with boost because the oppressor is currently... The fastest land vehicle in the game with the boost that is and right here on the runway you guys are going to notice i am getting ahead of my friend but just by a little bit just by a tiny bit i am getting ahead of him but not by much so i am i, I do this thing is a little bit faster but it's not really noticeable to the point it's not really that much that it's going to make a difference let's do a trial two just to be certain okay so right here we are doing the race again against two oppressors and an Itali again. Let's do trial two, and I let my friend on the black oppressor here get a little bit ahead of me. My friend on the green oppressor slows down right there, but I um, I managed to keep up with him, and even though he managed to get ahead of me, I managed to keep up with him. I managed to catch a little bit back up. So, in turn, this thing is a little faster, but not by much. Not to the point where it's really noticeable. Now let's talk about weapons on this thing. This thing comes equipped with those standard machine guns that you saw in a lot of other vehicles, the Oppressor, the Night Shark. They need to get rid of these machine guns. These machine guns, some of them up are crap and don't really do much, and they're inaccurate as hell. Now the other weapon are missiles on this. This comes equipped with 30 missiles, and they are very similar to the Ruiner missiles. In fact, they are the exact same thing as the Ruiner missiles. Just these missiles have a slight delay, so you can't fire these missiles like crazy. But they are very accurate, and they're more accurate, for instance, than buzzard missiles. They will hit the target, and sometimes they'll go over certain obstacles in order to hit the target. You guys saw right there, it just went over the obstacle to hit the target right there. So these missiles are unique in this thing, and they do and they do lock on the AI. A lot of times when you're doing missions in a lot of the other vehicles, they won't lock on the AI. Like, a, the oppressor will not lock on to the target and headhunter this one will which makes this vehicle very useful especially in missions and right here we guys you guys see we just completed headhunter nice and easy working together my friend who was in a helicopter took out the ones that are stationary i took out the, the vehicle targets now another part of this vehicle that's very important to talk about is this vehicle is very powerful it's kind of built like a tank even though it doesn't, it doesn't have the armor of a tank, it has the ram of a tank. So basically, if you're going full speed in this vehicle, you should be able to ram anything pretty much out of your way. Just don't hit vehicles sideways. If you hit vehicles sideways, sometimes you can flip, as you guys saw right there. But if you hit them straight up ahead, you will knock them right out of the way. So don't worry about traffic with this vehicle. Now, another question I wanted to ask myself is, can you use this vehicle in heists? So right here, as you guys seen, we were able to equip it in a heist. We are getting out of our apartments right now. Let's see if the vehicle spawns. Can we use it in a heist right now? Let's take a look here. Yes, we can. We can use it in a heist. Okay, and we are going to get right into this. Let's demonstrate, let's demonstrate against some AI and see how uh, effective this vehicle really is. 
So right here, as you guys see, we are leaving with the Karuma right now. And as you guys know in this part on Fleece of Java, you get ambushed by a ton of cars right now that chase you and try to ram into you here and they come from all directions. And because I'm able to use this vehicle in a heist right now, and these missiles are so accurate and they fly over obstacles, I'm able to easily take out the opposition right now. And I'm, I'm able to cover my teammate as she's driving right now and nothing is going to bother us right now. So we can easily get to Lester's warehouse without being harassed by any of these vehicles crashing into us. I'm easily clearing the roads right now. And these missiles on this make it so much easier. So this vehicle is going to be very helpful in VIP work and heists. And to top that off, this also um, works in contact missions. And because you can lock onto, because you can lock onto targets with this vehicle, this is gonna. This is one of the unique vehicles that are going to be used in heists. You can lock onto enemies with this vehicle, and you can clear out enemies. So this is, vehicle is going to be very useful, especially for people that want to do criminal mastermind. In explosive resistance, this thing can only take one missile or one sticky bomb, but strangely enough it can take two um explosive sniper shots when most vehicles other land vehicles take only one explosive shot so it is a little bit armored not enough to stop an rpg but enough to stop one explosive sniper round Okay, so let's take a look at the pros now. It's very, it's a very fast vehicle with the boost. Without the boost, um, supercars will catch up to it, but with the boost, it can keep up with supercars. And it has missiles and machine guns, and I guess the machine guns are better than nothing, but they're still crap. They're just, they're still crappy old machine guns that are on the Night Shark and the Oppressor. But the missiles are actually good on this thing, and you can have 30 missiles in this, unlike in the Ruiner, which only has 10. And the missiles are very accurate, and they'll hit the target easily, but they do have a delay. This can ram cars out of the way easily, kind of like a tank. And as I said before, it is good for missions. It's very effective in missions. It's going to be a unique vehicle because you can lock on the enemies with this vehicle. Not every vehicle you can lock on with. And especially in heists, a vehicle you can lock on enemies with, this vehicle is going to come really in handy on heists. Okay, now here we go with the cons. Now, it's a very expensive vehicle, $3,750,000. It's more expensive than a lot of the planes that they've added. It has very bad handling, but I don't know if you can I don't know if you can really give that a con in that because I mean it's a Batmobile and it's gonna it's supposed to be like a heavy it's supposed to be like a heavy vehicle. You can tell just by the handling that it's supposed to be a heavy vehicle. So I guess they made the handling kind of realistic to simulate the vehicle. It's weak against explosives, but I, I guess I put that on because that is a disadvantage, but I don't know if you could give that as a con also because it's it balances the vehicle out, I guess, so that it's not annoying with missiles at least. Um now this is this one is bad. The machine guns are very are very bad, and I'm tired. I'm tired of Rockstar adding these machine guns, these crappy machine guns that they add on the Night Shark, a lot of the planes, the Oppressor. Get stop adding these machine guns to a lot of the vehicles. They're so bad. Add, like let us use a sidearm in the vehicle. We can't use a sidearm, and they give us these crappy machine guns instead. And your passengers, they can't even use a sidearm also. So, you can use a sidearm in this vehicle, and the worst con of all is you need a mobile operations center to customize it. So basically, I feel like Rockstar intentionally trying to milk really a lot of money out of, with this vehicle. Like, they're trying to get people to buy shark cards just for this vehicle specifically. This is a very bad example of it, because... You need to pay three million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for the vehicle, and not only that, but you can't customize it in in you can't customize it in the regular paint and spray. So you have to take it to an MOC. So you need to own a mobile ops center. So you need to spend invest a lot of money into a mobile ops center, and then be able to customize it. And then you have to customize it in there. And thankfully, though, thankfully though, there's no research on this. Thankfully, thank God. But other than that, you Rockstar is really cheaping us out by forcing us to use an MOC for this. So they shouldn't have you. You should not need to use an MOC for that. I mean, I understand that there's missiles and all, but why can't the vehicle just come with that or give us at least in in the patent spray give us that option? I don't think that they should have an MOC for this vehicle because it's not technically part of gun running. But I guess that's my review, guys. I hope you do enjoy this. This vehicle is very expensive, but I do think that it's going to be very um it's going to be very helpful in um in especially in missions to come and and a lot of months to come in GTA Online. One thing that I forgot to add is that even though this vehicle did beat the oppressor in a straight run test, I do think this vehicle would lose to an oppressor in almost every single race because the oppressor can fly and because the oppressor is agile, this vehicle is not. That's not to say this vehicle is bad, it just has the oppressor and the vigilante both have their ups and downs. But I guess that's my review. Let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone. Yeah.